Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this chilly morning at our Savior Lutheran Church, Nokomis. A special welcome to any visitors we may have in the house, those of you returning from up north, our regular members, and of course, those of you watching us on our YouTube channel. Welcome. A friendly reminder, please silence your cell phones. We will have no Bible study this week since it falls on Thursday, which is Thanksgiving. So Bible study will resume on Thursday, December the 5th. After worship service this morning, we will be decorating the church for Christmas. Please plan to stick around and help us make our Savior festive. If you've got some time, it usually doesn't take us much time because we usually have quite a few people helping and it's greatly appreciated. Today is Christ the King Sunday. We are blessed to have Valerie leading our choir today in today's anthem. We are also blessed to have Barb and Bobby playing a four hands duet today, which I think we all love, in addition to hearing our choir, which we dearly love. In case you haven't noticed, we have the angel tree back in the narthex again this year. Uh, please stop and pick up a gift request for someone in need. We have a deadline. I'll let June fill us in on a couple more particulars of the angel tree, please. Eighth of December, so keep that in mind. Make certain the gift comes in unwrapped and in one of the plastic bags. Our next book club is meeting on Thursday, December the 5th at 1.30 p.m. Please make a note of that. And name tags. Again, I'll mention that uh, for those of you that do not have a permanent name tag and would like one, for those of you that have, might have misplaced your name tag and can't find it, uh, please, there's a list in the narthex if you put your name on it i will order them here in a few weeks and uh, get us all permanent name tags so everyone knows who everyone is and uh, last of all all of us at our savior lutheran hope that all of you have a blessed and a happy thanksgiving holiday this week any other announcements now it's time to sit back prepare our hearts and our minds for Christ Jesus as we listen to our prelude, Come Ye Thankful People, Come.
and in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captives of sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you with all word and deed by what we have done. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved in the name of Jesus Christ. Your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. 
Almighty and ever-living God, you anointed your beloved Son to be priest and sovereign forever. Grant that all the people of the earth, now divided by the power of sin, may be united by the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading this morning is from Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flame, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the Ancient One and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. The word of God. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 93. Please read it responsibly in the bold print. The Lord is king, robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. The Lord has made the world so sure that it cannot be moved. Ever since the world began, your throne has been established. You are from everlasting. The waters have lifted up, O Lord. The waters have lifted up their voice. The waters have lifted up their pounding waves. Mightier than the sound of many waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea, mightier is the Lord who dwells on high. Your testimonies are very sure, and holiness befits your house, O Lord, forever and forevermore.
The second reading this morning is from Revelation. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? And Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? And Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. So Pilate asked him, So are you a king? And Jesus answered, you say I am a king, for this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Please be seated and pray with me. Jesus, you are the Christ, King of the universe. King of all kings, who always was, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. Well, good morning. All you subjects of Christ the King, welcome to worship on the last Sunday in Ordinary Time. Finally, we have come to the end of Ordinary Time. But there's nothing ordinary about our time and service today. Today is Christ the King Sunday. Very special day. So musically we have Bobby and Barb and we have Norm on the horn and we have our very special choir director Valerie and thank you for leading our very special choir to celebrate this day when we're finally out of ordinary time and about to start a new time in our church calendar. And if you can, please try to stay after church today to get this beautiful church decorated for the season. Advent starts next week, the start of the time when we're getting ready to wait for the birth of a baby who becomes a king. And thanks to the talents of Scott Barrett, we will soon show the world, or at least we'll show everybody who drives by this church on 41, we'll show them that we live in the kingdom of the cradle and the cross. The baby who we're waiting for will be born on Christmas and will be crucified on Good Friday, but will rise again on Easter Sunday. So we are Christmas people and Easter people. And just wait until you see the new Christmas decorations designed and built by Scott. You're going to love them. And I hope that you can all join me at my home 
on December 14th at 2 o'clock, and there'll be more information about um, the address and the like, to celebrate the season and to see all my trees. I put a Christmas tree in every room in the house, seriously. So please join me. It would be such a pleasure. But back to now, Christ the King Sunday. That's what we're celebrating today. And it's interesting because this is sort of the New Year's Eve of the church year. But why today? Why are we celebrating Christ the King Day? Well, it's not because of any of the gospel writers. And it's not because of Paul. This celebration is actually the most recent addition to our calendar. It was proposed and adopted by the Roman Catholic Church in 1925. But we didn't even start to celebrate it until 1970. And the Missouri Synod churches, they still don't celebrate it. So listen to why and how this day became Christ the King Sunday. And it's all about a pope, Pius XI, who was the pope between the two world wars, which was a very, very difficult time. After the peace was signed that ended the First World War, Pius saw there was no peace. There was only hunger and fear, economic devastation, uncertainty. And it was the time when political groups were forming and becoming very powerful. Communism, fascism, Nazism. People were leaving the church and joining political parties that left God out. Jesus was pushed out of the process, and not just the political process. This was personal. People were turning to leaders like Stalin and Mussolini and Hitler, not to Jesus. And Pope Pius knew that any attempt to replace faith in God with faith in the world would never result in peace. Pius believed there was real danger trying to live in a kingdom without Christ as a king. But Pius was not the first one to know this. All our readings today talk about kings and clouds. Now the reading from Daniel describes a vision that he has, and he's in the throne room. And he can see the Ancient One take his seat on the throne. And Daniel describes this king as a woolly-headed old guy. He's ancient, and he's all dressed in white, and he's sitting on a throne that is on fire. And then Daniel describes someone who is like a human being, and he's walking on clouds, coming right up to the Ancient One. And then the Ancient One gives the cloud walker dominion and glory and everlasting kingship that can never be destroyed. Now, to be sure, Daniel was written during a period of threats, profound fear. The people feel hopeless. But Daniel sees more. Daniel sees a savior walking on clouds. And Daniel tells us the cloud walker is coming to save us. He's a savior king. And in our psalm today, we also hear about the king. But the king is a little bit differently described here. The opening words of the psalm in Hebrew are, Yahweh Malach, which means the Lord is king. And that's what we're celebrating today, liturgically. And this king has power and strength, even over nature, especially over the mighty waters. Now, usually when a psalmist writes about waters, we think rain. It's good for crops, so it's good for us. We won't starve, right? But here, in this psalm today, we have an Exodus reference. Remember when the Lord split the sea so that the Israelites could flee from the Egyptian army? And then, 
the Lord closed the sea and drowned the pursuers. So here we read that the Lord used his mighty power to save his people. So this is a short and to the point kind of psalm. And it is wonderful, wonder filled, because not only do the waters obey the king, but the waters actually sing praises to the Lord, to the king. And then we get another look at the king in our second reading from the book of Revelation. And even though the book of Revelation is full-blown apocalyptic literature, so it's full of visions and symbols, but it's also a very real letter there were, that was sent to seven churches in Asia. And these were real churches who were experiencing real problems and struggles. And all of these churches are in what is today Turkey, by the way. And this visionary letter is tied to everyday life. It's actually tied to our lives. The letter tells us that we are to actively participate with Jesus. He is the king. And this is the king who made us a kingdom. And he's still walking on clouds. And we are to walk with him. And that is not easy. Have you tried cloud walking lately? Not easy. But we have to keep trying. And our role is to testify and have confidence in the ending. We have to believe these visions of the end will give us the strength to endure the present because he will be coming soon, coming back. So we are to live like we believe that promise and then we will flourish, not just survive. So we get the idea that all three of these communities that we just heard about were living in peril and persecution and fear. So of course they look to a strong king with super strength to save them. But when we get to the gospel today, John shows us a very different kind of king. John's community is not living in peril. So John describes Jesus as a sweet shepherd, not a majestic cloud walker. But John also writes, Christ is the king but he's a humble king who teaches us to be humble and to do nothing except it be his will. Now, just so you know, the oldest surviving piece of New Testament literature, which dates from this early second century, is from John, and from, from this gospel, actually, that we're reading today. And it's a fragment. It's a small piece of ancient paper. And on the paper is written all about this exchange between Pilate and Jesus. So it's the confrontation over the truth. And Pilate wants to know, what is the truth? Well, sorry to say that the answer to that question is not on that fragment, which is, by the way, known as the Rylands Library Papyrus. But if you want to, you can still go and see it. It's in Manchester, England, on display. Early second century. So old. But now let's look for the truth in John's gospel. And let's set the scene. Jesus has already been arrested and taken to the high priest Caiaphas and then taken to Pilate's headquarters to be questioned. The priests want Jesus dead. And they're hoping that Pilate will sentence him to death. But on what charge? Well, they're not sure. But it doesn't really matter because this is ancient lawfare. They'll think of something to charge him with. So the first question that Pilate asks Jesus is, are you the king of the Jews? Now, when you picture Pilate, how do you see him? Well, John sees him as a cruel tyrant, ready to mock the pathetic peasant nobody named Jesus, and probably to mock and intimidate anyone who follows Jesus. So Pilate asks again, 
Are you the king of the Jews? Because that's what everyone is calling you. Your people call you king. But is that illegal? No. Pilate can't find any legal reasons to charge Jesus. So what does Pilate do? Well, in the end, we know he just washed his hands of the whole mess. And he says, I can't help you, Jesus. You won't even help yourself. But be certain, John does not see Pilate as an innocent governor. John sets up a real anti-Pilate profile. Here's a local government official who mocks Jesus. Pilate dresses him up in an old purple robe, and he sticks a crown of thorns on his head, and then Pilate just sneers his way through the whole encounter. And what does Pilate have written on the cross on which Jesus dies? The King of the Jews. So Pilate is not only mocking Jesus, he's also mocking and belittling anyone who places any hope in Jesus. But Pilate is not the bravest guy. He gets scared, and he tries to drop the charges against Jesus. Now, do you think that Pilate is actually worried that he's about to allow an innocent man to be convicted, condemned, and crucified? Well, John never tells us, because now Jesus takes over the encounter, and Jesus sidesteps the question by asking another question. Jesus asks Pilate, who asked you to ask me that? And Pilate responds, why are you asking me that, Jesus? What am I, a Jew? Do do I even know about these things? I am just telling you what people are saying about you. So then Jesus just clears up the whole kingdom concept by saying, yes, I am a king, but my kingdom is not of this world. And Jesus is telling us that too. My kingdom is not derived from this world. It's not created here, but it comes here. My kingdom comes to this world, praise God. So now we hear Pilate say, Aha, so you are a king. And now can't you just hear Jesus saying, Oh, Pilate, Pilate, I didn't say that. You said that. And then Jesus says, I am only here for one purpose, the truth. And that's what we should be thinking about today, the truth. Is Jesus the truth or isn't he? Well, the truth is we're almost at the end of everything. Jesus has been betrayed by Judas, taken prisoner by two priests who want him dead, but they don't want to do it. So that's how Jesus and Pilate end up together here in our reading, asking each other questions. And we are still asking the same questions. Are you a king? What is the truth? Who are you, Jesus? And this is the most fundamental question of the Gospels. And the most fundamental question for all of us and how we answer really matters because everything hinges on it. So what king do you serve? And tell the truth because not just Jesus is on trial. The truth is on trial too. So can you see that the truth will be crucified along with Jesus because Pilate turns the crowd against Jesus. And can you see, we are the crowd. So we need to turn to the truth. So will you turn and accept the truth, the whole truth. Christ is the King, so help you God. And will you live your faith? Don't leave it here at our Savior every Sunday. Will you take it with you when you leave? And will you share it? Will you say grace out loud in a restaurant? And will you smile with loving goodness at everyone you meet? And will you believe that no pilot, no priest, no president, no general can ever give you 
dignity, or freedom. That comes from your king. So will you live like you know Jesus is your king now and forever? And all the people of God say, we will. We will. Amen. Please stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, our only Son, Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, and he ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the resurrection of the the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. Amen. Rooted in God's abundant love for the world, let us pray for our neighbors, the church, and all of creation. And we ask you, God, to heal all who are suffering. We ask you to heal those who are named here in our bulletin, in our messenger, those we hold in our hearts, and those whose name we say to you aloud. Please, Lord, bring them healing and wholeness and revive our congregation, synods, and national church body to reflect the love, justice, and kinship of your kingdom. Raise up diverse leaders who teach and serve your people. Merciful God, nourish parched lands and bring relief to flooded places. Protect wildlife habitats and endangered species that the chorus of creation praise resounds with joy. Merciful God, grant wisdom to the leaders who govern, legislate, and deliberate on our behalf. Advance your nonviolent reign of justice-seeking love through their work. Merciful God, draw near to those who are detained, on trial, or incarcerated. Transfer, transform systems of retribution into systems of reconciliation and restoration. Empower activists who activate and advocate for change. Merciful God, Remind us of your enduring love in all seasons. Guide the planning efforts of worship and volunteers and leaders who usher our congregation into a meaningful advent. Merciful God, in your eternal presence, the saints sing of your majesty. Join our verse voices with theirs in praise to the one who loves us and frees us from sin. Merciful God, 
We offer our prayers to you, gracious God, trusting in your boundless love for all that you have made through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share God's peace with one another. so good God's peace thank you we enjoyed it God's peace God's peace I need God's peace God's peace be with you God's peace be with you God's peace God's peace let me go up and get busy I'm slow Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their unending hymn.
night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the table and taste and see that the Lord is good. Please be seated.
Please stand and let us pray together. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness and water to give new life and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your son's resurrection that we may show your glory to all the world through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Now receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. God.